Good morning. My name is Bishop Ronald Harris, the senior pastor at the Canaan Baptist Church. I want to first of all thank you for tuning in to our program this morning, and we certainly have a word from the Lord for you. But before we get going, I want to share some information with you, asking to keep uh, certain of our members uh, up in prayer. I want to special prayer for the Bell family. Uh, our beloved Deacon Bell, his sister passed away, and I want you to keep that family uh, in prayer, as well as uh, our chairman of Deacon Board, uh, Deacon Thompson, his wife, uh, Deaconess Judy, her nephew passed away. They'll be traveling this weekend uh, home for his homegoing service. I want you to keep uh, Sister Zandra Morrow, her brother, lost his sister. Please keep them in prayer, as well as Sister Mary Harris. Uh, she was married to my dad. Uh, she passed away. And I want you to keep Sister Lorraine Thomas, her mother is sick. Please keep up, up in prayer. And we want to pray for all those who've been affected by the uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID virus. Uh, we ask you to continue to practice safety, uh, wearing of masks, washing your hands, social distancing. And if you can, uh, stay alert to uh, availability of the vaccine uh, vaccination. Uh, again, this morning, uh, we're still talking about renewing the mind, and I want to stress this because it's such a important process of um, us living a victorious Christian life. So I want to pray with you, and we'll go immediately into the Word of God. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, thanking you for all that you are, you being our God, we being your people. We ask you, O oh God, as you have sent your Son, Jesus, to save us and the Holy Spirit to sanctify us, God, we ask that you would, would stress to us and show us the importance of uh, renewing our mind that we may experience uh, some of these truths and reality that the word uh, promises. We ask, oh God, that you give us endurance and stamina, uh, that we can stay the long haul with you, God, that we can live out the, the bright promises of your precious word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Getting started, it's important to understand that God created us three-part being. Uh, we have a spirit, we have the body, and we have the soul, the mind. And uh, God's original configuration uh, with the first man, Adam, is for the spirit to lead man. The spirit influences the soul, and then the soul influences the body. We have to understand that the body is simply a servant. The body has no capabilities of making any type of decision. The body simply follows the leading of the mind, the soul, or the spirit, whichever influences have the greater influence on the life, that's who the body will follow and the body will cater to. And also when I'm using this word body too, I want to denote a special aspect called the flesh. Now the flesh is this living uh, organism within our bodies that reacts to the mind. And you hear the Apostle Paul saying fleshly minded or cardinal minded. He's speaking of people who are led more by their feelings or being led more by the things outside of the word of God. And then you hear Paul use the word spiritual minded. And when he says spiritual minded, he's talking about people who are trying to be influenced or trying to live by the word of God, understanding that uh, within the Godhead, uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God has give God gave special missions to Jesus. Jesus' mission was to come to save us from our sins. The Holy Spirit role was to come and transform us into new beings. And the Holy Spirit does this by renewing us in the spirit of our mind. We still must understand, regardless of confessing salvation and receiving the Holy Spirit, if the mind is not affected, there'll be no change. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And he goes on to say, eat and drink, says he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsels which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. In other words, 
the words, the thoughts that we bring into our heart become food toward our belly that fills us and leads us. So the words we speak based on the thoughts that we allow to, to fill our heads will lead us, uh, will lead our lives. So the quality of life that we live will depend upon the way that we think. It's so important to understand the principle. As a man thinketh, he will be. If a man is always thinking negative, the manifestation or the display would be a negative person. If a person is always thinking defeat, that person will live a defeated life. Regardless of how much we may desire to do well, if our words are contrary to what we are speaking, we will live a life of defeated. The very thing we do not want will come upon us. It's just a law that God has established. So when I say about renewing the mind, we must first understand that renewing the mind is a struggle. Over in the book of John, the eighth chapter, I want to read a, 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 a very, very, very popular scripture here to you. In the eighth chapter of John, St. John, you've heard it a million times over in verse 31, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, his disciples are there, and he's talking to them about truth and freedom. And I want to pick up reading with you what the Lord says here. Over in the eighth chapter of St. John's, and let's read in verse 31, it says, Then Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now this scripture is directly related to the product of renewing your mind, what it will produce. Jesus says, if you continue in my word. So in other words, his words are, it will provide the concepts of making truths. And he says then that uh, if you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now to, to really understand this verse, we have to understand that Jesus is not just talking about head knowledge. He's talking about heart knowledge or what we refer to as revelation. Simply knowing the truth will not set you free. Now what I mean by that is I can know by word knowledge how to assemble a trampoline. But until I a similar trampoline, I do not have the revelation of the application of doing it. What Jesus is saying here, the knowledge that we hear, we believe, we receive, and we apply to our life will set us free. I can fill out a, re a resume for a job, an application for a job. I can know it as a job, but if I do not act, I do not respond, I do not apply myself, I will not get the job. We can hear the word of God, but if we do not hear the word of God and then believe the word of God, receive the word of God, and then apply what we hear that it become revelation to us, that it's attached to us, that truth that we know from the word of God will not set us free. If you want to do the test yourself, just think about what the Word of God says. The Word of God may tell you, uh, I sent my word and it healed you. Just by hearing that word, it will heal you. But there's something you must do with that word to receive that promise. It must be appropriated or it must be applied to your life. And one of the things we do as Christians that we feel in this process, we must understand that the renewing of the mind, it takes time. We have to spend time getting the word into us. We must learn how to speak the word in 
and over our lives. Once we plant the word of God, the truth of God's word into our heart. I want to go back for a moment and talk to you about God promised to Abram and how God got the word inside of Abram. Number one, he gave, not only did he give Abram a verbal promise that you will be the father of many nations. He gave him a visual promise. He told him to count the stars, to look at the stars. And what happens is, every time Abraham sees the stars, he sees and repeats the promise. He is sowing the promise or the image of these children within him into his heart. Every time he repeats this promise, he is putting within his heart He's graving in his heart this image. And now notice also with renewing of the mind. Abraham was over 100 years old. And based on knowledge and feelings, he could not have a child. So notice what the promise required Abraham to do. It required him to speak not what he was feeling, because what he was feeling would mean that he was inadequate to produce the promise of God. He was required to speak not what he was feeling, but what he believed. So we have to understand God is saying with this word and with the power of the spirit, what we believe can offset what we feel. So we, have, we must learn how to master focusing and speaking, not what we're feeling, I'm feeling sick. Not what we're feeling, I'm feeling depressed. Not what we're feeling, I'll never be anything. Not what, not what we're feeling, I can't get my life together. But now I must believe in God's word to start believing beyond the state that I'm in. Because where I'm at now is not my final destination. So I'm going to believe myself out of the situation that I am in. And the Bible says, through the, the abundance of the, by the abundance of the house, heart, the mouth will speak. Again, that simply means your body has been designed to speak words that the heart has the ability to process and bring to fruition. And when they come into fruition, they will speak. And when the word is spoken, as a man thinketh, so is he. So you must understand your body is a melting pot of transformation through the word of God and the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and it's so important to understand that with our mouth, we can either talk ourselves into victory or talk ourselves into defeat. So many times, the word of God will tell us something or you and I want to do something that's good or that will lift our self-esteem. And all of a sudden, we, we, we are bombarded with negative thoughts. And instead of going and doing what we wanted to do, we end up talking ourselves out of doing what we want to do. So see these words have power to motivate us or to stifle our initiative. But let's go back to this truth and this freedom. That there's a struggle here. And if you look in the New Jerusalem Bible, it says that to renew the mind actually calls for a revolution. And if you look up the definition of the word revolution, a revolution is a war that is fought for the purpose of dethroning governmental authorities and to make political and financial change and social changes in our lives. So when you put that together, we understand then that renewing the mind is a conflict in which we wage what we refer to as spiritual warfare to dethrone 
mindsets that have been on our mind for years, maybe uh, the majority of our lives, that are opposed to the ways of God, and we dethrone them by renewing our mind to the word of God. So important here. So it's a revolution. Renewing the mind of God, getting the revelation of God's word, and we receive the word of God. We believe the word of God, and then we apply it. And as we apply this word, and we work through, and we stick with the word, this word will, will transform into revelation. That will definitely change us. Now, there's some other important aspects that we must deal with with renewing the mind. Number one is, renewing the mind is a function that you and I must do. Now, God has provided him. Everything has a role. I told you that Jesus came to save us. The Holy Spirit come to renew our mind with the word of God. But it's you and I who must make the choice. Number one, it requires partnership and cooperation. Another way we can say it, it requires agreement and cooperation. You and I must come into agreement and cooperation with the Holy Spirit to help us with this life-changing task of renewing our mind. People, I cannot stress enough to you, whatever you want in life, you must gauge your mind to accomplish it. But to make sure you live the fullness of life, your mind, especially the new creation, must come in and we must get away from the thought patterns of the old creature and embrace the new in Christ realities or the new identity we have in Christ. When you and I became new creatures, we have new capabilities. We have new boundaries. So what we have to understand now is there's a fuller or more abundant life that we can live. And the way to live this life is to renew our minds to this life because our minds will determine how far we will go in Christ Jesus. Now, number one, the Holy Spirit is there to help us. The Word of God is the manual that will be used to renew our mind. God will apply all the grace we need to accomplish the task. We must apply the faith. God gives the grace, which really is the power for you and I to exercise the faith. God will provide the power. We have to provide the vessel. The vessel is us that he can fill us with his power. And then finally, God will provide the wisdom, but you and I must go through the process to receive and develop an understanding how we are to not only apply the promises, but work out the promises to live an effective life. And when we're renewing our mind also, we must understand a concept here. A mindset way you think but it is your mind that needs to control that mindset yes we must understand that you and I to some degree we can control the way we think we can't stop negative thoughts from coming to our minds but what we can do is we can fight them down and we can move away from them this is what Paul called, again, working to become mature or working to become spiritual minded. We have to begin a process of using our mouth. And I gave you an analogy of it before as a thermostat and a thermometer. Regardless of how me and you are feeling, use your words to change the climate, not only within yourself, but in all of your surroundings. If you walk into an environment that's filled with neg negativity, you do not have to drift off into the negativity. 
you still have control over your mind, which can exercise control over the mindset. The Holy Spirit gives us a spirit of truth. He gives us a spirit of truth to devoid any error. So if I go into an atmosphere that I feel deaf in, I feel that something is not right about it, I have the ability to remove myself from that environment, from that situation by thinking with the new renewed mind, what God is trying to get you and I to do is to see situations from a different perspective and act different. When, there will always be an opportunity for you in your day-to-day -day life to get into conflict with people, to argue with people, to fight with people. That will occur every single day. That's part of your training as a Christian, whether we know it or not. But what God is looking for us to do is to look at a situation, you see it from a fleshly or carnival point of view, and you see the negativity of it, and you see what's bad about it, and you focus on that, or God is when you, you see that, see it from a different perspective, and then you handle it from a spiritual view, viewpoint. This is what God means by renewing the mind. In other words, not allowing those negative things to eliminate the good qualities of Christ that we have. We have to understand that. So we, we, we work this thermometer, this, this thermostat effect where we groom our mind to understand it's all about us changing our outside environment by renewing our mind to change us on the inside. Yes, this bothered me out here, but it doesn't have to control me in here. See, what comes out of me is gonna defile me. What comes into me, what I see out here, doesn't defile me. I have a choice to allow that to, to, to de defile me. So what I have to do though is be thinking a program in my mind to think spiritual. So we wake up in the morning and I renew my mind to the new day. Father, through the Holy Spirit, let me walk in your grace today. Let me be mindful of all of the things that you would do today. Before I speak, before I respond, let me think about you. Now, do I do this every day? No, because I'm far from being perfect. But it is a process of day by day trying to become more and more like Christ. And I want to close with you again here on the power of the human mind. When God created us again, spirit, soul, and body, in that arrangement, because the spirit, spirit was superior and the soul and the body was subordinate, Man lived a perfect life. He, he didn't sin. He pleased God in all his ways. When sin came, the spirit was removed. And now, man's mind, without God, controlled the body. And again, the body is simply a servant to the mind. So we lived out a life lived at the at fleshly mind. When we see in the tabernacle system, in the outer court, which represent the worldly life, the unsaved life, the unsurrendered soul to God, then we see the church aid, the holy place where the church is today, that's the new man who is being saved in the process of becoming holy, and then the most holy of holy place. There was a curtain, there was a veil, that separated the holy place where we were at and the most holy place where God was. There was a veil. In other words, that's light on the other side of the veil. But this curtain, this veil, not only is it stopping you and I from going over into physically, and I want you to understand this too, in our sixth dispensation, we do not physically enter into the holy of holy. It's a mental process of a, a, a spiritual mental process or spirits that we have in the presence of God, not a physical coming 
into the Lord, for we can't do that in the flesh and survive because of his glory and his pureness. And we have not been fully transformed with a new glorified body. But what, 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 is God, what God is trying to get us to understand, when Jesus split the veil, that meant that we had access into the Holy of Holies. So where is this access really at? Well, if you apply to our life today, this veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place is simply this veil of flesh that came over our mind when man sinned and the spirit left. And all of a sudden now where the spirit led us at one point when met before man sinned, now the spirit did. And this veil of flesh is hanging over our mind, blocking the word of God from entering into our mind and to our soul to transform us. When Jesus came and saved us, this veil now is removed. That the light of God, the word of God, the radiance of the Holy Spirit can come into our minds and can come into our soul and transform it. So what we need to do now is get the word of God and get the Holy Spirit to come into our mind, penetrate in our mind. And the more the word of God grows in us, our faith gets stronger, our manatism, our behavior and our habits become more like God. And we're going to live a more victorious life and we're going to enjoy life to a greater depth. May God bless you. I thank you for spending the time with us this morning. We pray that the word of God uh, was a blessing to you. Again, I cannot uh, stress how important it is to renew our mind. There are so many Christian people who are frustrated, uh, angry, simply because they cannot live the Christian life. It just doesn't seem to work for themselves. And after a period of time, they come to a point because of false thinking, they believe that things would change by one morning they'll wake up and everything will change. And it will not, that's simply not the truth. Study the Bible and look at the characters in the Bible. You will always change before your situation change. You must change before your situation change because you can control your situation. So God solves our problem by changing us. If, if our situations change without us changing, situations will always be able to control us because our character, our will, our determination, our stamina, our endurance, our perception has never been challenged to be developed. Our patience has never been developed. What I, could, what, I, what I couldn't take 20 years ago, I still can't take now if God deals with my situation instead of dealing with me. God is more concerned with what's in you than what's going on outside of you. So to get this change, there must be a spiritual warfare. We call it conflict. And in this conflict, God develops patience in us, character, long-suffering, kindness. All of these fruit of the Spirit are developed through these situations. And when we began to, to, to experience the renewing of the mind, and it, sometimes it comes a little at a time. And when you see you're getting, receiving more patience, celebrate that. Be glad about that because it's going to help you in the long run. And remember that the next trial that you go through. But remember, it's a process. But you get better and better each and every day. And remember, no matter what you experience in life right now, no matter how much hurt or pain you're going through, remember, things can get better. Stick with God. Don't give in. And no matter how much pain you feel, no matter how much hurt, continue to speak what you believe in God for and not what you're feeling. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you.